today. Oh, look at us. <laughs> Share the screen. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joe. You're welcome. Do we want to go ahead and get started? Sure. Awesome. So can you go to the first slide, please? So thank you everyone for joining. Um, it is noon, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so a few different things. Um, so first of all, again, thank you once again um, on behalf of everybody here. Um, we are hoping that you enjoy this webinar and um, you get a lot of answers today. Um, please feel free throughout the chat, throughout the webinar, excuse me, to use the Q&A function on the bottom of your screen if you have any questions. The Q&A function will give out, um, will show the question that you sent, even if it's anonymous, to everybody in attendance today. So if you have maybe a more private question or you want um, a more private answer, please feel free to use the chat feature. That'll go to all of our panelists today and um, we'll get back to you on that way, on, um, via that way. If it is a good question um, for the general public, we may kind of state it to everybody, but we will not say your name. Um, and then there will be a survey at the end of the webinar. Please, please fill it out um, so we can get your feedback and see what helped and if there's anything we can improve. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Casey. Thanks, Claudia. Um, so my name is Casey Hauser. I am a coordinator of new student enrollment at Rock Valley College. A fun fact about myself is that I was able to graduate with my bachelor's degree in three years thanks to RBC. Um, so my educational journey did start at RBC for that one semester. Then I ended up transferring to Illinois State University um, and obtained my Bachelor's of Science um, in Organizational Leadership Communication. Um, every summer during undergrad, I'd come back to RBC and take summer classes that transferred there. Um, and then I decided to stay and get my Master's of Science in Health Communication. And then, like I said, I took those summer courses at Rock Valley College. If you look on the left, um, you will see my little family. Um, so I do have two dogs, the little one with the graduation cap. Her name is Lemon. And then we recently adopted our Black Lab mix, who's sitting on the tractor, and her name is Myla. And I'm going to pass it over to Amanda so she can introduce herself. Great, thank you. My name is Amanda Zika, and I am the Getting Started Center Coordinator at Rock Valley College. So we help welcome our new students and help with the adjustment from um, high school or a non-college student to college life. Um, a fun fact about myself is that I was the valedictorian of my class in high school, Charlotte High in Punta Gorda, Florida. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in anthropology from the University of Florida, Go Gators, and a master's degree in anthropology as well from Northern Illinois University. All right, thank you. Thank you. And um, hi, my name is Claudia Consuelos. I am a coordinator of new student enrollment, just like Casey and our host Joe today. Um, a fun fact about me is that I am a first generation student, meaning I am the first of my family to go to college. Um, so being in this position is really rewarding for me because I get to be that resource for students now. My college experience actually started at Rock Valley College. I earned both my Associates of Arts and my Associates of Science um, thanks to some AP courses I took in high school and then the club exam I took at Rock Valley. After Rock Valley, I transferred to Illinois State University where I received my Bachelor's of Science in Sociology and um, Pre-Med. And fun fact, um, Casey and I actually were at ISU at the same time, but we met at Rock Valley um, as coworkers. <laughs> um, on the left-hand side, you'll see a picture of my family um, at my wedding, which was actually 11 months um, ago. So one more month and it, I can finally say a year ago. <laughs> um, so are you ready to start? Um, so just as to reiterate, um, your fall registrate or fall um, semester courses do start this Saturday, August 15th. Um, you will see your online classes on your Canvas um, opened up and ready for you to start them. Um, weekday classes do begin Monday, August 17th. I do want to stay um, a little warning because of the storm that occurred this Monday. Um, all in-person classes that were supposed to take in attendance in, um, in person this week um, are going to be online for the first week. Um, so just kind of 
work with your professor to see all those details. Um, so another thing is to make sure you're checking your schedule on online services. Um, there are courses that are considered late start classes that these might start either in September or October. Um, so always go to your online services and check the details of each particular class. If you're nervous about finding your classrooms where um, the where your, your the buildings are at, um, in the beginning of this webinar we were broadcasting our virtual tour and you can access this tour um, by going to rockvalleycollege.edu and then slash virtual tour and then you can kind of get a virtual tour of our campus. Again, our campus is currently closed because of the storm damage and we want to make sure it's safe for you to be on our campus. So um, the best way right now is to do the virtual tour. So um, let's talk about how classes might look for you this fall. So there are four different types of classes that we're offering. We are offering asynchronous, synchronous, hybrid no lab, and then hybrid with lab. So asynchronous, um, also just called online courses, are where your course is 100% online. There is um, no particular time you have to be logged in, and um, this will be conducted through Eagle or maybe a third party site such as um, Pearson's MyLab for like those math courses. Um, but all in all, this course is completely online and we'll look into how this will look on your Canvas, or sorry, your online services in just one moment. The second type is synchronous or virtual. So what we mean by this is that it is also found online. So you don't, or you are not coming to our campus, um, but there is a specific time that you are committing to um, where you are required to be in attendance for either the online lecture portion, uh, maybe you just have a specific meeting times um, or different activities that you do. So you are committing to a specific time and date. The third option is a hybrid course um, with no lab. So these could be maybe like an English 101 class or a speech 131 class um, where part of the instruction will be in person. So you are com coming to our campus. And then the other half um, will be online. Then the last option that we have this fall is our hybrid with lab. So normally these are for science-based courses where the lecture portion of your class will be um, online, but when you go to, you'll actually be coming to the um, lab portion in, on campus. Um, so one thing we always want to reiterate is to just check your student email to make sure you're getting um, specific details on those courses and make sure you're getting all um, direction of where you're going in case um, you are coming on campus. And if you haven't received anything but want, um, want to be sure that you're you have all the details, you can also um, take the initial step to email your professor as well. So next we'll see how these types of classes look on online services. So as we mentioned earlier today, um, the best place to make sure to have the most precise details on your courses is online services. So on online services, if you hit um, either register and drop sections or my class schedule, you will see something that looks similar to this. So asynchronous courses, um, otherwise known as online courses, will be, um, the location will stay online. The meeting information will Will tell you what day it starts and then what day the class ends but then it'll say internet based course and then it says times to be announced rooms to be announced because there is no particular time or room that this class is designated designated since you are doing it at your own pace and completely online synchronous or virtual um, will also have the location of online and then you'll see on there again it'll tell you what day it starts and ends and it, it'll say internet-based course, but then it will tell you the days of the week it meets as well as the times. So again, you are committing to these specific, specific times for these online courses to make sure you are able to be in front of a computer and logged in um, as designated by your instructor. Hybrid courses that don't contain a lab, as I mentioned, an example it may, could be a English 101 course. It will tell you the location, it will be one of our campuses. So our most popular campus is our main campus that's going to be RVC Mulford Road. Um, you can see other different types of campuses such as our um, RVC downtown location or our Stenstrom location. Um, and then again, it'll tell you this times it starts and ends, um, but now it'll say other hybrid. 
and then it'll tell you both the days that you are committing to as well as the times. But now it'll also have a building and then the room number. The hybrid lab is very, very similar. The only difference is, is that it'll say lab lab and that's the one you will be coming in um, to campus to um, attend in person. And that will tell you then the days that you'll come in and then the times as well as the building and room number. And now I will pass it on to Casey. Thank you, Claudia. Um, so now we're gonna go over what is RVC Eagle. So RVC Eagle is our learning system that our online classes are based out of. So if you're a student who maybe in high school used Skyward or Canvas, this is our version of that. So that means that this is where a majority of your classes will be based out of. Um, we're gonna go over where to find this course. Um, so Joe, if you could pull up the Rock Valley College main website. Absolutely, give me one second. So it is important to note that not all of our classes run through Eagle. So you might have a teacher that, um, especially for math, uses Pearson Math Lab. You might have uh, teachers that are using Zoom for their main lecture content. You might have teachers who are using Google Duo. Um, so there are a lot of platforms that you might have classes, but Eagle is our most common one. So as you can see now on your screen, we are on the Rock Valley College main website. In that gold bar at the top, you're going to see where it says My RBC, and we're going to click this. If you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see RBC Eagle, and we're going to click this. This brings you to a login page. So your login is always going to be your student ID number with a lowercase s. And then your password is going to be the same passwords that you use for your student email and your online services account. If you don't know your password or your username, you'll have our contact information at the end. So please feel free to contact us so we can get that sent to you so you're ready to go. So we're first going to look at your published courses on your dashboard. Um, so your published courses are the courses that have already been published by your teachers by this point. Um, so classes should be published by the end of the day today. So they should be popping up as a little box there. Um, we're going to look at one of the bottom, that middle green one, Joe. Thank you. And if you could click students view on the right. So when you click a given course, you're going to land on your welcome page. Um, so this is the home page for your course. So you might have a picture there and then some general information about the expectations of your teacher for that course, what's expected for you, how to get your textbook. It might be a video. It might be uh, bullet points as this one is, um, but it kind of depends on your teacher. Um, then we're going to go on the top, we're going to talk about um, the announcements. So announcements are how your teacher is going to kind of check in with you throughout the semester. Um, so this is just a way maybe your teacher will use this to remind you of what assignments are due that week, when you have a quiz coming up, if they have any additional resources for you to look at, that'll be posted with your assignments. Um, you can also ask questions through the assignment. So if, um, for example, I have um, one of these that are talking about purchasing your course material, so different textbooks. If a student had questions, they could comment back so that I'd be able to assist them. Next, we're going to talk about the syllabus. So the syllabus can either be posted or there's just going to be a link to it where you can open it in a Google Doc. But this has very important information such as the instructor's name, the email, office phone number, office location, and how their office hours are going to be held. So if you're not familiar with office hours, this is a time that your teacher dedicates just to help students. So if it says that their office hours are in person, you can walk into their office at any time during those office hours to get assistance. You can also call them or set up a Zoom appointment during that time to get whatever help that you need. If we scroll down a little bit, well, there's course objectives. Um, go all the way to the bottom, please, Joe. And then there also is going to be a spot where it breaks down what assignments are due each week. Um, so for this specific class, everything is due on Saturdays. And then it shows that on the side so that students have the whole week to work on it. Um, there's the details of the topics that we go over and then when they're due. So Joe, if you could go back up to the top. Next, we're going to talk about modules. Uh, modules are a really good way to make sure that you're staying on track and getting all of the information. Um, so if Joe, you could click that welcome. 
this will take you to the main page. And then if you scroll down, you'll notice that there's a next arrow. If you continue to go through this module, it'll give you all the resources that you need. So if there's videos that you should watch, any information that you should have, it's all through here. As you continue going through, quizzes are in here. It also gives you different discussions. So this is a really good way to make sure that you're staying on track and completing everything that you need for your courses. Um, next, we're gonna talk about discussions. So discussions give you an opportunity to interact with other students as well as your professor in your classes. Um, so if you are, um, this first one here is like a get to know you one. So for example, I have students asking, what, where did you go to high school? What book are you currently reading? Whatever those kind of get to know you questions are. So if I answered, I'm Casey Hauser, I went to Belvedere North High School, um, I was on the swim team, and then someone else was like, I went to East High School and I was also on the swim team. You can comment back that way. Some teachers have it set up that you get points for just responding to the discussion. Others want you to respond to the discussion and respond to another student. So that's just how you can interact and get more information about what you're reading in that class, what you're going over to make sure that you're understanding and to get other students viewpoints. Next, we're going to talk about assignments. So if you see in your syllabus that you have an assignment due and you don't really want to click all the way through that module, you can access it through here. Um, they should be named the title the same as what is in your syllabus. It shows you how many points it's out of and then what date that it's due. And then next we're going to look at conferences. So conferences, um, like I mentioned at the beginning, is kind of another form that your instructors can use. Um, so this might be, it's very similar to Zoom, where you can get on here, interact with your teacher and with other students. Sorry, Joe, go ahead and go back to the course. Thank you. Um, and then quizzes. Quizzes are the same if you see on your syllabus that you have a quiz due. You can just pop in here and get that quiz done instead of going through that module. A really great part of this course is if you go, or with Eagle, is if you go to the calendar. The calendar has the option for you to pick whatever classes you'd like to see, and then it shows you those due dates. So as I mentioned before, um, for my class, I allow my students to work on things all throughout the week, and then everything is due on Saturdays. So you can see what is due every Saturday. And if I was in more courses, I could select those as well, and it would put those in my calendar too. So this is a really, really great way to ensure you're completing all of your assignments on time and that you're keeping up with what is due when. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is our inbox. Um, so our inbox, um, this is different than your student email. So in a couple minutes, Amanda's gonna to talk to you more detail about your student email. But this inbox is specific to Eagle. So um, you can get access to everybody in your, um, thank you, Jill all of your classmates' emails. So if you have a question and you wanna ask a classmate, you can talk through there. It's a good way to set up study groups with your classmates if you wanna study for a test. And then you can also message your teacher. So it's very important to read that syllabus so you know how your teacher wants to be contacted. If it's through their Rock Valley College email, if it's through their Eagle account, or if it's by phone. Um, so just make sure that you're kind of checking both emails to make sure that you're getting all of the up-to-date information. And then I'm going to pass it over to Amanda, who is going to talk to you all about your RBC student email. So Joe, if you could go back to that, that would be great. Great, okay, thanks guys. So it's really important that you're checking your RBC student email regularly. That is the official communication from the college. So important information from instructors, the financial aid office, records and registration will come here. So yep, you're gonna go on our website, click on RBC student email. It's a Gmail based email. It is your S and number and then same password that you use for Eagle and online services. So you'll go ahead and log in and as I said, you just want to make sure you're checking it regularly, uh, maybe even every day, because you'll be getting important information. And I always warn students, if you've never logged in, you're going to have 600 emails waiting for you to sign in and, and read. So make sure you're reading them and reading them carefully. Um, sometimes students come to us and say, oh, no one ever told me. Well, it was just, an, it was told to you via your student email. Great. So, yep, check those out. Sometimes there's also coupons for the bookstore and a lot of other good stuff in there. And as Casey said, this is different than your Eagle inbox, but sometimes people do receive notifications to their email from their Eagle inbox. Great. Thanks, Joe. So, uh, I believe next is on our uh, PowerPoint.
we are going to talk a little bit about our resources. Yeah. Thank you. So we want to make sure that you realize even if you're totally online and not coming into campus that you do have a lot of resources available to you as a student. Um, make sure to seek these resources out. You have paid for them with your student fees. Um, the first one I like to mention is our tutoring and writing center. So these um, when campus is open are available and they are working on some remote access or appointments um, with students. Um, make sure before you come to campus that you check and see whether an individual office does need you to make an appointment. And if you are coming to campus that you wear a mask and check in at our Welcome Center. So Joe, if you want to start with the Tutoring and Writing Center website. Thank you. Give me one second to switch the share screen to that. And maybe look into these resources before you're struggling. Sometimes if we're, we're already struggling in a course, maybe we, we could have used these a little earlier. Also, if you're struggling in a course, just like we said during our welcome, always reach out to your instructors. They are such great resources and they may have office hours or something you can visit. So when you're on the tutoring site, we're gonna scroll down and then I believe there's a um, area ask a tutor. So you could start here if you have a quick question or you'd like to schedule a time when, with one of the RVC tutors. Um, it looks like they uh, have a turnaround of 24 hours on the weekdays so you can fill out this form. So this is a nice option if you're looking to connect with someone who's specifically at RVC. The other wonderful thing that we have if you go up to the right side is something called Upswing Tutoring. Upswing is also available via your Eagle Help. This is 24 seven online tutoring. So you'll sign in with your usual S number and password. Um, this is a nice resource if it's outside of regular business hours. Sometimes we're directed here if we have a specialized topic that maybe no one in the RBC tutoring center is available for at that moment. They also have assignment review. So our writing center helps writing with writing and editing papers as does Upswing. So you can upload a paper, um, have that reviewed. I believe there is a limit on the number of people's papers per semester with Upswing. But again, another great resource if you're at home um, and you're unable to come to campus or contact anyone at RVC. If you go to the homepage, also you are able to search for tutors in specific subjects. So if you go to meet with a tutor, and you search in the inbox, you could look for some of those specialized topics that maybe you're struggling in or a specific course. Um, with Upswing, it's important to remember that not all of these tutors are at Rock Valley. So you can see that the Rock Valley tutors will come up first, which is nice so that you can schedule or message or find a time. If they're online right at that moment, it will actually say online now. But as you go down, you'll see that some of these tutors are just through Upswing. So they could be anywhere in the country. Great. So I encourage you take a look at this, um, play around. Start looking into these resources now because again, we don't want to wait until we're already struggling or that our grade is suffering. Um, if you go back to our PowerPoint, we have some other resources too uh, that are included in your student fees. Um, during our regular open campus times, we have a math lab. If that's not available in the fall, you can go ahead and contact your math instructor. So take advantage of those resources to help you be successful this semester. All right, thank you. And then I think I'm taking it back over to Claudia. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so just, we just want to take, touch base on some on-campus guidelines. So just to um, stated one more time, um, this week coming up, we are going to be close to the public, again, because of the storm damage that we've experienced. But after that, um, once we are open, um, we are still carrying some guidelines for um, precaution and want to make sure that everybody is safe. So our student center and library hours are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you want to come on campus once it's open, um, you do have to make an appointment to be able to um, come into our buildings and um, be seen by somebody. You will have to be wearing a mask at all times and then following all social distancing rules. 
And then if you are experiencing any symptoms um, related to COVID-19, we ask that you just call us ahead and we can reschedule. Again, we just wanna make sure um, we are taking all the precautions necessary and um, uh, for you and for everybody else. So um, we would also like to share our social media. Um, so if you are an incoming student, we invite you to join our um, RBC Incoming Students 2020 group on, on Facebook. And then we also have our social media handles for Instagram, which is at Rock Valley College, and then Twitter, which is at Rock RBC Golden Eagle, sorry. Um, and then for updates on anything regarding our COVID-19, we do have a particular website for it, and it's at rockvalleycollege.edu slash about slash COVID FAQ. Um, so now I will open it up for discussions or for questions. So we did have one uh, question come in the chat that I think would be helpful for many others. Um, so a student asked, what if you don't see your courses published yet in Eagle? Um, that is normal. Um, it's not that you're not enrolled in the course as long as it's in your course schedule. All that means is that your professor has not hit that publish button to make it accessible for you. Um, so you should be seeing that today, um, if not for sure tomorrow. Um, if you are still not seeing it, be sure to contact your instructor directly and then they can maybe help you through that issue. Don't be shy. Please ask your questions. Um, we are here to help. So it looks like we had one about how to email an instructor via Eagle. So that's a great question. Um, Joe, do you want to look? Do you have Eagle loaded up? Um, let's see here. I can get back to it. So Eagle is that inbox, you can actually message anyone who teaches at RVC or is a student at RVC. And to me, the easiest way is to utilize that RVC community group. Um, if it's a class that you're in and has been published, you'll be able to just open up that inbox and message someone in your class. But let's say your class isn't published or you're looking to contact someone whose class you're not even in, um, that you'll be able to go to that inbox and it's it's navigated much like most other emails where you'll be able to compose a message. Um, it's a great way to get a hold of an individual. Um, and then we did have another appointment come through or appointment, sorry, question come through. That was how do you set up an appointment to go to the library? So if you go to our Rock Valley College website and type library in the search bar on the right, it'll take you to our library page. And it's really nice because if you scroll down to the bottom, it says buy appointment only, and that has a hyperlink. And if you click that link, it'll just help you make that appointment. Um, you can also email them. Um, they are responding within 24 hours on the weekdays. Um, and they have their own online chat feature where you can talk to them too. Um, so make sure that you are using that. Um, and then their phone number's on there as well. So just type in library in that little search bar on the right hand side of our website and it'll give you all of that information. And I know they have computers you can use in there and um, printing. So if you're having any technology issues at home, but again, they do ask that you sign up for a time to come in. Ooh, we have a great question. Do we have to buy a parking pass? No, that is one of the best things about Rock Valley is that you don't have to buy a parking pass. There is a ton of parking on campus. Um, so you might park a little far away, but definitely not as far as you went to a four year and it's for free. Um, so that's very exciting. Also, if you're looking for getting a, to get a hold of anyone who works on campus, we do on the My RVC tab have a faculty staff directory where everyone's email is listed. And if you're full time, your phone number is listed as well. So um, definitely play around on our website. There's so many great resources on there. And then oh, someone asked, um, do we get IDs? Um, so you do have a student ID um, 
already, but if you want a physical like ID card, um, you are more than welcome to make an appointment again. This would be with our admissions department and they will tell you what time slot to come and we'll be able to take a picture of you and give you your ID that same day. Right, and then is that PowerPoint accessible? Also, we will be posting a the live recording of this um, on the page where you registered, um, so you'll be able to watch it go through the PowerPoint again. Um, and then, if you have any other information, any other questions, you can always contact us. Uh, will the gym be open? I'm very personally affected by this. It's not open, um, sadly. So if you do have like a fitness class, like if you're in like beginning weightlifting or fitness walking or any of those, the gym will be open for those students, but it's not open to all students. So unless you're enrolled in a fitness class, you're unable to use the gym at this time. And then someone asked, RVC um, Bookstore canceled the appointment because of the storm. How understanding will the professors be the first week? Um, so as we kind of touched based on before we actually started, um, one of the best advice that we would give is to just like um, have that communication with your professor, reach out to you. Um, all of our staff and faculty are very understanding of the storm. Um, of course, it was something not in our control so um please just let them know what's going on and um should um for a very rare occasion um they're not as understanding as you like um you can reach out to i know casey and i um and i'm sure amanda too we um we always talk to students um who might be having difficulties if we um talking to them and we can help you out from there too um i also want to add on to that as well um there is a way to buy textbooks like not from rock valley um so although that's kind of what we encourage you can also buy them from like amazon.com or chegg um so if you're a little bit nervous waiting for the bookstore to open um i would recommend kind of going to those sites if you go to your textbook list through your online services account there's an isbn number and that's like the um I don't want to say social security number. Like that's not code. <laughs> the serial number for the textbook. So if you copy and paste that into the search engine, it'll bring up that exact book that you need. Um, so that might help you get your books a little bit quicker than waiting for the bookstore to be open because um, we're not sure when the opening date will be at this time. We also had a question about using financial aid at the bookstore. So if you are using financial aid, it does have to be through the Rock Valley Bookstore. Um, there is a process that you can use. So my recommendation would be to contact the bookstore um, and they can walk you through that process of how you'll load it up. And I know they are offering free shipping right now. Um, I know if you order your books today, though, you probably won't have them by Monday, but that is a nice option. And there is a certain window of time that you'll need to use your, your financial aid at the bookstore. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of great rental options out there, used books and things like that. But if you do want to use financial aid, it has to be through RBC. And I believe there's even a, still a Facebook page um, from Rock Valley students. Um, it's, it's called Rock Valley Trade or Rent by Books. Um, so I know I've, I've seen that Facebook page still being used. Um, so there's a lot of different options to get the books. I know. Oh, sorry. But, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, someone asked, are there any discounts using student IDs such as like Hulu, Netflix? So, um, the discounts from other companies, um, are independent for, of the company. So, um, some, I know that like Amazon has, um, Prime for students. Um, there's a lot of different, um, opportunities you can use, um, student discount. A lot of times you just have to use your email account. Um, so just kind of look at whatever website you are, and then um, you kind of almost have to ask sometimes. Otherwise, sometimes they kind of advertise it, especially right now with school starting. Um, but yes, um, I, I know I took advantage of that <laughs> as a student, and I encourage everyone to do so. We also had a question about buying textbooks now or after classes start. 
I usually say that's personal personal preference. You could certainly wait until Monday and see. Um, I would, if anything was packaged, leave it in the packaging. So um, that way, if you had to return it later, keep all of your receipts, keep it wrapped up until you know you're going to use it. Because if you open it and then try to return it, I don't think you'll get the full discount. Um, sometimes there's questions about access codes too, like to the My Math Lab site and things like that. I usually direct students to your professor since they're the one who will be assigning you the homework and having you use those sites. So they're going to be your best resource. With that too, I want to add on that um, if you access your textbook list on the Eagle or through your online services, um, sometimes professors even say on there like wait for, go to class first. Um, before you purchase your um, book. So kind of keep that in mind too when you're looking at your um, textbook list. I know classes are starting right around the corner, um, but um, for the future too, some of them may state that. And then the next question, is Student 100 a required course? So Student 100 is required for any student who is planning of a, on obtaining an Associate of Arts, an Associate of Science, or an Associate of Engineering Science. Um, so the students that kind of fall out of these categories are those who are getting like a certificate or going into like a specific program like nursing or welding or like automotive. We had a question in the chat too. If a class is not based in Eagle, such as a math class, will they still have something in Eagle? Um, I can't say 100% for sure that they will. I, I believe they'd be likely to and probably direct you to my math lab, especially since we're in this online environment. Um, but at times it can be the instructor's discretion. So again, like we said earlier, if you don't see it in Eagle, just communicate with your instructor. And then a question about financial aid reimbursement. That's a great question. I would direct you to the financial aid office for that. Claudia or Casey, you wanna chime in on that one? Do you have any other recommendations? Yeah. So it is kind of dependent on when you filed your FAFSA. Um, so your specific reimbursement might be different than another student's. Um, so the best way to do this is to contact our financial aid office and then they'll be able to give you a more of an exact roundabout date um, but it does take a little while for that check to come through and it will be sent through the mail. Um, so just keep that in mind um, that the mail does go a little bit slower than if they just like automatically put it in your account. Um, but contacting the financial aid office is the best way to get your answer on that. And if you aren't sure what your award is or if you've finished the process, online services also has a lot of nice links that say um, like financial aid award, financial aid missing documents. And I think that's a great place to start to just peruse, but I know it can be confusing. So that's where I take advantage of our financial aid office. Those are all really good questions. Mm -hmm. Any others? Don't be shy. Uh, if I could offer any advice for online classes, it would definitely be to be organized and set aside a place in your house that you're going to do your work. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I made in college was thinking I could do all my homework from my bed, which didn't work very well for me. Um, so find a place in your house that you just do work, that you don't eat, that you just sit down, do your work, schedule time without through your week to go on each class to make sure that you're hitting those deadlines. My advice would be um, just to ask for help if you need it. Um, if you know, you're struggling in a class, um, we already touched base on a lot of different resources that are available to you as our students. Um, but let's say um, you know, something new comes up, we're always trying to add new resources. So maybe you, we didn't touch base on something, um, but just ask one of us. We are more than happy to guide you to the best um, resource for you. Right, and I would say another thing to do, kind of building on what Casey said, is time management. Keep a calendar, keep a planner, come up with a system that works for you. Maybe make a daily to-do list and a weekly to-do list, but stay on top of everything because it can get overwhelming when you have multiple classes and multiple due dates and multiple assignments. So uh, keep yourself organized. I think 
think that was a great answer too with um, someone just asked any tips or advice regarding balancing school and work. I would really um, like to emphasize what Amanda just said, um, balance or time management, being organized as Casey said, um, because those are two good habits to have in college. And I know that's what helped me. Um, I also had a few different jobs working in college, so. Another really good resource um, that we didn't talk about today is that we do have a lot of on-campus student employment opportunities. Um, so like Amanda has a whole team of student mentors that work with her department. We have a lot of student ambassadors. Um, so if you're interested in on-campus jobs, you can contact any of us and we can give you more information about that. But if you're having a hard time with maybe your manager or your place of employment, understanding that you are a student in school really does need to come first. Um, having an on-campus job is a really great opportunity. A lot of our jobs allow you to do homework while you're at work. You still get a paycheck, so it's not like it goes towards your tuition. And we completely understand that you are a student first, that work comes second. So we really do prioritize the importance of you getting your homework done, you staying up with your grades on your, on staying up with your grades and your homework. Um, so do just keep that in mind. Um, I thought it was easier to work while I went to school or else I had too much free time and would do a lot of nothing. Um, so it is possible to balance work in school. You just kind of have to find the right rhythm for yourself. We had a quick question too about study rooms on campus. The ones that I know of specifically available when we reopen after the storm damage are the library. They have some great areas, but again, you would have to sign up for that. So, um, you know, Casey gave you that information. Um, those are the only ones I know of specifically. I also think while the weather's nice, we have a lot of great picnic tables and a gazebo and areas on campus you could study outside. I know as a student, one of my professors actually taught a class outside because when it was really nice, because our campus is beautiful. <laughs> yes. And there's outlets. There's yeah. outlets out there. So you can yes, even there's a charging there. station. Um, and, you know, someone asked about exercising. A lot of us walk or run on the paths around campus, too. So that's free and open right now. All right, well, you guys asked some really, really wonderful questions. Um, we are so excited that so many of you joined today. I hope that you have a better understanding of Eagle and what to expect. Um, if you do have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to myself, Claudia, or Amanda. Um, we are all more than happy to help you answer those and make sure that you're prepared for your first day. Um, so thank you all for joining us. You are all going to do amazing this semester, but please know that we are here to help you succeed, and we hope to see you around campus as soon as we open up, but good luck. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.